Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the SucuX W20 cryptocurrency hardware wallet and the Xseed Plus. We're gonna open it up, we're gonna check out the hardware and then install it. So let's take a look. This just arrived in the mail a few days ago. I've been kind of excited about this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the open box. We're going to check out all the specs and then we'll set it up. So right off the bat, you can see that they take the packaging very seriously. There's the hardware inside will not shift around. It's been packed nice and tightly in here and very well secure. This package contains the W20 and the Xseed Plus. They're stacked one on top of the other. We're going to start by opening up the hardware wallet, which is the W20 cryptocurrency wallet. The first thing that you're going to notice as soon as you look at the box is the tamper resistant seals on both sides. If you receive a package like this for any hardware wallet, if the seal is broken, you definitely do not want to use it. It's been tampered with, or you can assume something has been done. And that's the first thing that you're going to be looking for when you purchase a hardware wallet. So I'm going to take off the plastic wrap and now I'm going to cut open these seals. Let's take a peek inside and see what we have. So this is the 2.8 inch color touchscreen display. It comfortably sits in your hand. And if you look at the side of the device, you can see that there's the blue tamper resistant tape. It's covering a port right now. So if anyone has been tampering with the device, you'll know if that seal has been broken. And over here on the side, you can see that there is a single button on this device that's gonna be for powering and authorization. Now let's look at the Xseed Plus. We'll just cut open the wrapping and peel it off. And here we go, trade safe, store smart. This is gonna be for your crypto seed phrase. So we're gonna open this up. So we got an envelope in here, which contains some stuff. We'll take a look at that in just a second. And here is the steel letter punch set. It's a heavy box, so I'm just gonna open it up from the inside. Let's take a look inside this envelope. And there's some instructions on how to engrave or stamp in your passphrase. And it looks like we have a pen of some sort. It looks like the etching pen. So these are solid, looks like stainless steel cards and there is three of them that come in the box this is some solid metal definitely indestructible it's going to withstand fire or whatever you're going to throw at it and this is a engraving pen you can go ahead and etch in the words on your metal plates and this is a holder for the metal cards and this is the steel letter punch set so everything is engraved on it so you know what each letter is and each letter has its own punch down key and it's a solid piece of steel and basically what you're going to do is you're going to hold it on the card and you can hammer in the letter. And this is what it looks like. So we're talking about indestructible seed phrases here. And that is the contents for the XC Plus. So here's the hardware wallet. You can see over here that we have the tamper-proof seal on it. I'm just going to cut it open and then we're going to peel it off. And as you notice, as I'm peeling this off, the words void pop up. If you see anything like this before you even open it, that means it's been tampered with. So do not use the device, return it back from wherever you got it from. So you can see that there is the micro USB port on the side and that's how we're gonna connect it to the computer. So I'm just connecting my USB cable to the SecUX wallet as well as the other end is connected to the PC and I get the welcome screen right over here. My desktop, you can see that it's been recognized by Google Chrome as a USB device. So I can click on the link and it's gonna direct me to the website. We'll click on it and it's gonna pop open our browser and it looks like it's ready to launch and connect. So we have the option here to connect via USB and Bluetooth. We're gonna be using the USB option because we have it hardwired into our PC with the USB cable. So we'll go ahead and click on connect and it has the device already here. So we'll just select it and then click on connect. So on the hardware wallet, you can see that it says get started. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that and it's ready to add a pin. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in a pin here and I'll jump over to the end of this. And now it wants me to enter in a name, so I'll just put a name in here. I'll just type in crypto. And now it's ready to assign a seed phrase. Now the seed phrase is very important. That's what the X seed wallet is for. You hammer in this phrase and you're not supposed to share this with anybody. This is extremely private. It is the line of defense for your wallet. If anybody has access to this phrase, they have access to your wallet. So I'm gonna go ahead and record this. And what I'll do is I'll jump to the next step. So now we've completed the setup on the device. We've just reset the page and you can see that we're successfully connected to it. We have a prompt over here that gives us a welcome message. Uh, we can leave all these options selected and then click on continue. And here is the main page. So let me just open this up a bit here that there is a firmware update available. So I'll be updating the firmware and we have some announcements over here and we can scroll down a bit over here and you can see how to add accounts, send and receive and device functions. So over here on the left-hand side, you can see all the compatible tokens that are listed. So we're gonna do the update. Let me click on that. So the first thing is letting you know that you may need the recovery word, so you wanna have that handy. Now we're gonna connect it via USB, so we'll click on continue. 
and we can begin the firmware update. So the firmware is being updated. Definitely, I recommend doing this part before you connect any tokens to it. You don't wanna have any issues while the firmware is updating for whatever reason, if it corrupts or any uh, issues happen during the update, you wanna make sure you have a fresh device. So we're updating the firmware first before we continue and do anything else. And it looks like it's update is complete, so we can click on okay, and it's gonna to try to reconnect to the device. And we'll say reload. Now on the device, it's asking me to enter in my pin, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'll just refresh the website now that I've entered in my pin, select my device. You can see the name that I had provided is listed there. Click on connect and there we go. So now we have the latest version of the firmware loaded on here. So right now, as an example, we're gonna add an Ethereum wallet to the device. So I'm gonna click on Ethereum and then we have to, we're gonna be adding an account here. So click on add an account and we can give it a name. Okay, just gave it an account name and then click on okay. And there we go. So it's added an account here and then you can automatically just click on it and then you have the functionality of any other wallet that you would use software based on your computer to send, receive, and buy. And you can also manage your tokens. Then you get your transaction history here. And we'll just go back over to this window. Uh, if you take a look at the device, you can now see that my Ethereum wallet is now showing up in it. And it's called CryptoJar, it's labeled in there. And what I'll do as well is I'll just quickly create a, how about I do a BSC, since I have a lot of BSC right now. I'll add a new account in here and I'll just give it a name. There you go. Just call it my BSC and then click on OK. And you'll see that it populates on the device. It has a logo next to it. And I also have it here on the web dashboard. So this has been connected to our PC. And this is going to be the same process. If you have an Apple device, you're going to launch a browser and connect it that way. Now what we're going to do is connect it to an Android device. The steps will be very similar to an iPhone. The first thing we're going to do is install the app. So here I am on my Android device. I'm going to open up the Play Store and I'm going to search for the SuckUX app. And here it is. Just tap on it and we're going to go ahead and install it. And you want to make sure that your Bluetooth functionality is enabled. And I have my Bluetooth enabled right now. Go ahead and now tap on open and it's going to open up the app. And so we have it connected via Bluetooth. So let's see what happens here. So it wants me to create a password. I'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I've entered my password here and I'm gonna tap on continue. And there is a terms of use here. So I scroll down, agree. So there you go, agree has been lit up and go ahead and tap that. And it wants to know my location for this device. I'm gonna allow it. I'm gonna say only this time. And now it's gonna search for the Bluetooth device. There we go. So it found it and there is my device. It's the only one in the list here. So I'm going to tap on that. So the code has just popped up on the device. I'm not going to show you this part because it is secure and I don't want to share that with you. So I've just synced my phone with the SuckUX hardware wallet showing up the two accounts I just created. Everything that I'm doing on the wallet is now synced with my phone so I can go ahead and confirm and process transactions via my wallet. So when you try to do transactions with your phone, you're going to have to get authorization from the hardware wallet to process it. And that is the unique feature about this wallet. It can connect via Bluetooth and pair that way. You will always need authorization from the hardware wallet before any funds can leave your wallet. We've installed the software on the device. We've set it up. We've also paired it with an Android phone. The setup for an Apple phone or iPhone will be very similar. So you can follow very similar steps. You're just syncing it and connecting it entering in the authorization code, and then it goes ahead and syncs up your wallets. And that's how you do it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash that like button. The W20 is one of three hardware wallets that they have over at their website, and I'll make sure I link that in the description below. The nice people over at SuckUX have provided us with a promo code, which is CryptoJar. And if you enter in this promo code, you'll enjoy 15% off. So if you're interested in the wallet, you can go ahead and do that. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.